CRTs. They're awesome. Everyone knows they're awesome. Your mom and dad definitely know they're awesome. And deep down, even you do too. But there's just one thing. They weigh a lot and they have some depth about them. So it makes sense that people have completely abandoned this older display technology in favor of newer flat screen televisions. Uh, that and companies just straight up don't make them anymore. If you grew up, um, ever, then you probably remember the CRT that you sat in front of the most while you were growing up. I happen to have this old photo of myself here around age six doing just that, and it's quite plain to see that your boy been hitting the switches. Today we're talking about retro video games, and more specifically the options that we have when it comes to the TVs that we play them on. This has all been spurred on by the fact that I just picked up a highly desirable model of CRT, and no, I am not talking about the Shrek TV. Allow me to introduce you to the extremely rare 36 inch Sony KV36 FV310. And it's bar none the best standard definition consumer CRT you can possibly get. So let's get started by talking about some technicals. And keep in mind, a lot of this information comes from internet forum posts and articles just shy of two decades old. Starting in 1998, Sony had begun refining their flat-faced FD Trinitron Wega designs, meaning year after year, their TVs just kept getting better and better. And by the time this model was manufactured in December of 2003, nothing quite matched the natural looking depth, dimensionality, and corner to corner clarity of their Wega line. I hear you, Toshiba fans, I hear you. But come on now, what you know about that aperture grill though? The 36 FV310 has a traditional squarish 4x3 aspect ratio screen, so news and network show broadcasts of the era appeared vibrant thanks to Sony's best 3D digital comb filter that actually improves resolution while reducing video noise. Now, at the time, you had a choice between a 27-inch version, a 32-inch version, and the 36-inch version. And the 36-inch version offers 25% more screen area, which is a significant difference, you know? If you've never owned a big tube TV like this one, I can assure you, this is one hulking mass of technology. So how did I come to be in possession of what uh, many people consider to be the greatest standard definition TV set of all time? Well, I'll start off by saying that back in June of this year, um, the release schedule for summer 2019 looked to be a little dry in terms of current gen video games that I was looking forward to play. I almost exclusively play AAA titles and nothing looked that interesting to me until Borderlands 3 and Death Stranding were to hit the scene. So it was around that moment that I uh, looked to the past for ways to wind down in the evenings, and I decided to set my sights on the PlayStation 2 and its disgustingly gargantuan library of titles, many of which I had either never finished, rented, or owned back in the day. Like any self-respecting retro gamer, I grabbed a pair of component cables, hooked the PS2 up to the old Samsung 4K. After a while, I was kind of like, you know what, F this flat screen, I'm getting a CRT. I mean, just take a look at this side-by-side -side comparison of Metal Slug X on a CRT versus 4K flat screen. Is there really even a choice here? Here at the studio, we're all about authenticity. Plus, the secret is out. If you want the best picture quality from your retro gaming consoles, everybody knows you gotta cop a CRT. Now, I should probably tell you all about the role that OfferUp played in uh, securing a screen for me to game on. OfferUp, as you know, is a location-based selling app. It, along with like LetGo and Facebook Marketplace, really helps you keep an eye on secondhand products other people around you are trying to get rid of. Opening up any one of these apps presents you with a smattering of options. I'm seriously spoiled for choice because it seems that like anything that I could possibly want is just a DM away and there's no shortage of CRTs in and around the city. I ended up choosing this model right here. This is a Sony KV 
27 HS420. It was just down Northside Drive, 10 minutes round trip, and it was free. On top of that, I was so geeked to get it back to the studio because as I was getting it in the car, I noticed it had an HDMI port on the back, and I was like, what? I mean, I thought I was the shit. I was like, did you? This CRT has an HDMI port on the back of it. Now, what we finna do? My friend Micah Moore put it this way. There's just something so hipster about playing the Division 2 super sampled to 4K on a PS4 Pro set to output at 720p in the 4x3 aspect ratio on a 27-inch CRT. I mean, come on, baby. I did it. I'm that f***ing guy. He said I had to be at least one of ten people on Earth doing the exact same thing. And for all I know, in that moment, he was probably right. But it wasn't long before I began to notice something extremely peculiar about this model of TV and its input lag. This unit here, manufactured in 2006, is what's known as an HD CRT, meaning 240p, 480i, and 1080i content are all processed digitally in such a way that adds a few frames of input lag. And when it comes to video games, what do we know about input lag? It's bad. It didn't matter if the content ran at 60 FPS or 30, playing video games on this television never really felt quite right. And anytime there was excessive bright, white colors on the display, like during the Dreamcast splash screen or this fuzzy static here, the green tint seems to go all the way up. And I mean, that just sucks, like on some straight up broken type shit. I mean, look at the color difference between this and this uh, Magnavox down here. Just as soon as it had arrived, my dreams for playing retro content were shattered and my life was ruined. Except that's totally not what happened next. I mean, the TV was free after all, I got back on OfferUp, and that's when I found the big one. A simple Google search revealed that people on Reddit who also owned this model had been garnering comments such as, I'm Jelly, Lucky Bastard, and that is one of the best, if not the best model you can get, get it now. The hype train had left the station. In a moment I was like, oh my god, am I about to get the best CRT ever? Hell yeah! The value was clear to me, seeing as how this used to be a $1,600 set when it was brand new. The phone conversation with the guy went a little something like this. Hey, hello? Hey, this is Ben from OfferUp. I'm calling about the 36 inch CRT. Hold it for me, man. I can come get it this week. Ain't nobody holding shit, my dude. I'll keep it for you, but you better bring somebody to help you move it. If you show up by yourself, I am not helping you move this to your car. No big deal, man. Are you the original owner? Is there anything wrong with the TV? I'm a gamer, so I need to know what condition it's in before I take this thing downtown. Trust me, if you're a gamer, when you see this thing, you're gonna shit your pants. Shit my pants? But that was all I really needed to know. Now earlier, when I said that I just picked up a Trinitron, I mean, this thing weighs as much as Mike Tyson did when he was the heavyweight champ, and moving it into the studio was a nightmare. My buddy Ayal and I drove uh, an hour round trip outside the city to Alpharetta, brought it to the secret room where it sat on the floor for an entire week. Because you can't drop your CRT if it's already on the floor. <laughs> As far as furniture goes, they say the only thing big enough to rest a Sony Trinitron on is another Sony Trinitron. I thought I was going to get lucky with some retro piece of furniture for it, but I couldn't find anything. Eventually, my buddy Ross stopped by and helped me build this custom TV stand using wood we picked up from Home Depot, and there it will sit forever. It's crazy. You put down a flat screen gently in fear of breaking the flat screen, whereas one of these, you put it down in fear of breaking the table and your fingers. Immediately the difference from the last TV set was obvious. It looked like it had never been used a day since 2003. In the evenings after work, I began campaigns across Scarface, Devil May Cry 3, Silent Hill 2, and Resident Evil CVX. It's like I had died and gone to heaven. The hunt for the best possible CRT was over before I realized that it had even begun. And that is just 
That's just crazy to me. Okay, how about why do gamers prefer these kind of CRTs when it comes to retro gaming? Basically, it comes down to no input lag between button presses on a controller and the action on screen. Games that require precision timing like Third Strike or something like Mega Man are usually the kind of experiences that lose their luster on a flat panel with uncontrollable motion interpolation. Okay, what are some of the fun things you can do with a television like this? What can we see here? Scan lines, better color, viewing angles, no lag, what it do. Recently, one of my favorite forms of overkill comes from using a PlayStation 3 console to output a 480i image over component and watching a movie on Blu-ray disc. This effectively downsamples a 1080p image to 480i and older pictures shot on film like like The Godfather, Evil Dead 2, and uh, Do the Right Thing look phenomenal on this display. Now this is a 480i display, which is why it reigns supreme as the best standard definition set. 480p just won't work at all. I know this gets explained a lot all over YouTube in videos about CRT and retro gaming, but interlacing is when the screen receives a picture for just the odd lines on the screen, and then a picture for just the even lines on the screen, alternating back and forth. This gives an illusion of higher resolution images at the cost of some distortion and blur. The advantages are needing to send less information and lower display speed requirements for the display itself. Progressive video means uh, updating every single pixel on the screen for every screen refresh. You know, this requires that all the pixels can be updated twice as fast as an interlace signal and requires twice as much information at the same number of frames per second. So check this out. Diving into the settings using the remote reveals a curious feature called 16x9 Enhanced. DVDs, the primary home video format of the day, were known for presenting movies in their original widescreen format. When the KV3110 detects that a widescreen anamorphic DVD is playing, it can automatically switch to 16x9 Enhanced. So where most TVs would reduce the number of scanning lines and therefore resolution of anamorphic DVDs by like 25%, this enhanced mode slightly compresses the height of each line. No image quality is lost as all of the scanning lines are concentrated in the 16 by nine window and none are wasted on the non-usable portion of the screen, which would be the black bars above and below. When I discovered this feature, it was mind-blowing because now movies looked even better on this TV. <laughs> I even found on games like GoldenEye, which has a widescreen output, can make use of that 16x9 enhanced feature and looks really interesting on a CRT without scan lines. Like, check out the difference right here. Not sure which one that I prefer, but it's good to know that I have the option. Around back are two composite, one S-video, and two component inputs. Up front we have one composite and one additional S-Video port. The order of these inputs in terms of overall video quality from worst to best are composite video, S-Video, and component video, right? They're all analog inputs, but they work differently. Inside the TV is this thing called an electron gun. An older black and white TV from the 50s had a single electron gun. Color TVs have three because each pixel on the screen is made of red, blue, and green. This yellow cable smashes the red, green, and blue signals into one cable, and it's up to the TV to split the image apart. You really want to send the red, green, and blue to the TV separately to make sure that your colors don't bloom and bleed all over the place because that sucks. If you'll remember, all North American uh, DVD players and game consoles used to come with these crappy cables, and it's like... People who weren't up on their home entertainment game were always looking at the crappiest picture quality from the devices all the time. I'm pretty sure it was just about everyone. It's really great to see games designed with CRTs in mind represented as the game developers probably intended. Like, check out this picture of Final Fantasy VII being made. Come on. If you haven't seen a CRT in a while, it might be time to plan a trip to Third Eye Collective. Interestingly enough, this TV has a really nice 3D comb filter. 
uh, which separates the luminance signal from the chroma signal, reducing video noise. So if you had to use composite, like for say the N64, Mario 64 looks pretty great. You know, Duke Nukem 64 looks pretty great. I'd also like to mention just how dark colors can get on here. This TV's blacks are so black, it looks like widescreen content is just floating in space. This is a stab, of course, at the lost decade of LED TVs that we all had to endure before the likes of uh, HDR and OLED displays showed up. Older LED flat screens, like the ones uh, we've been using for years, really had shitty black levels. Black pixels on those screens were white pixels just turned all the way down. I guess I like the bezel. You know, it kind of grew on me. You can see the speakers there on either side of the screen. It's thick, boy. Pairing the TV with surround sound is the right idea, but if you don't feel like firing up your whole system, this thing packs 30 watts for sound, including 15 watts for the built-in subwoofer. You heard me. This thing is knocking. As this TV ages, I've read that the bass produced by the subwoofer could rustle internals, uh, causing a bowing effect on the screen or knocking the electron guns out of alignment. So yeah, I'm good on all that. It's soundbar season anyway. By now, I've already spent a lot of time with this TV, watching and playing just about everything I can on it. My Xbox 360 E console supports analog video output, but not components. So I had to find an Xbox 360 S, which does support component. And I guess I should talk about the 360 since I'm here. There are a lot of really cool games that came out in the HD era that developers chose to still support 4x3 aspect ratios with. Games like uh, Gears 3, Halo 4, and GTA 5. Yeah, GTA 5 in 480i on an Xbox 360. Yo, how the hell is GTA 5 even running on a console that only has 256 megabytes of RAM? I'm talking straight wizardry. GTA 5 on a CRT, I'm just gonna say it, it's a vibe. My favorite games to see on this TV so far have been OutRun, Metal Gear Solid 1, Metal Gear Solid 3, Street Fighter Third Strike, Goldeneye, Star Fox, GTA 3, Halo 1, Quake X, Red Dead Redemption, Raiden 4, Netflix on the PS3 to watch Neon Genesis Evangelion. That was wild. I watched the whole show and I was like, It all just looks so great. If you come across a KV36 FV310 and you have the room for it and you're a retro gamer, should you try to acquire it? Hell yes! Case closed. Before we get out of here, I saw an interesting uh, question brought up online about ever seeing production of high-end boutique CRTs for retro gaming enthusiasts. It's almost like the complete opposite of what the new micro consoles from Sony, Nintendo, and Sega are doing with emulation for newer 4K televisions. Just like how vinyl came back in style, could we ever see CRTs put back into production? It seems like the answer is a pretty resounding no. We'd need to overcome a few things in order to make a CRT. For starters, the glass envelope that allows a good seal and can stop x-rays requires a lot of lead. Lead in a product for the home and things like x-rays are expensive regulatory hurdles. I mean, you'd have to uh, reverse engineer phosphors, which are like secret recipes that haven't been made in years. The tube itself, which combines UV sensitive resins and hydrofluoric acid to etch each layer. It's a huge health hazard and thus regulated, so boutique use is out of the question. A vacuum system to pump, bake out, and seal the tubes, and that's expensive as fuck. High voltage components like flybacks aren't made anymore, so you'd have to reverse engineer all that. From the sound of things, there's just no way people would pay enough to justify recreating an entire manufacturing ecosystem. But you know, I mean, hey, nothing's impossible, right? Uh, at the very least, boutique CRTs may end up being an OLED flat panel in a box. Maybe a 4x3 aspect ratio to mimic the experience? I don't know. What do you guys think? 
My next real hurdle is figuring out how to connect my PC to the CRT. Apparently getting uh, 15 kilohertz from HDMI to component requires Ubuntu, MAME, a specific subset of AMD drivers. I'm just not there yet. If anybody knows the best way to get 240p from a Windows box to my CRT over here, holla at me in the comments. And I think I'm gonna leave it there for this video. Thanks for listening to me nerd out about this display. I wanna thank uh, RCRT Gaming on Reddit for being an absolutely amazing community and helping me make sense of the insane amount of mixed information there is out there when it comes to CRT. Never stop hunting. If you want a CRT, freaking go get one. But I gotta warn you, it escalates. I'll try gaming on a CRT becomes filling your entire house with them. Y'all make sure to subscribe. I'm feeling really good these days and uh, I have more content planned coming up. There's links in the video description for the Scary Bros Discord. Come holla at the squad. If you guys are in ATL and want to play some Bond with me during your studio time, we can hit it up. It's here. I'm out of here. See you guys later.